Okay. All right. Um, all right. So today I am going to give a lecture for this week and also, but there are a few things that I would like to discuss. Uh, first, I will discuss about the submission of activity one until activity five for week one, two, and three. Uh, second, I will talk a little bit about activity six and seven for this week. And the third one, I will talk about uh, the uh, about our first assessment. Okay, our first assessment, assessment number one, the introduction of your informative speech, uh, to which I, I will explain uh, on how to go about uh, kita punya first assessment tu. Macam mana cara dan sebagainya lah, so that you understand better, yeah. And then I will continue with uh, today's lecture. Uh, uh, sorry, I will continue with today's lecture. Uh, I will talk about the body content as well as the conclusion of your informative. Eh, sorry, of of a speech, the body content and the conclusion of a speech. So last week I have already discussed and also explained to all of you about. Um, the introduction of a speech and what are needed in the introduction. So I will continue with the body content and the conclusion this week. And also at the same time, I will also talk about visual aids. Okay, uh, visual aids for a speech. All right. And then we are done for today's lecture. Okay, now first let us talk about the submission of activities one until activities number five. Now I have received uh you know a uh, few students as i think uh, by now everyone is uh, everyone uh, uh, has already submitted your um, activities one until five yeah and activities one until five uh, is basically to cater from week one until week three okay uh, given given the circumstances because some of you face uh, problems in registration i mean in registering the code ke, ataupun the course ataupun your class so i have decided last week to extend the deadline for you to submit your uh, video um, for activity one until activity three because activity one until activity three the deadline was last week but i have extended to um sunday and monday respectively yeah uh, if let's say your mass lecture is on monday then your deadline is on sunday and if your mass lecture is today tuesday then the deadline is uh, yesterday uh, midnight uh considering that you have problems and issues however we cannot continue extending the deadline so in the case of this class yesterday was your uh, was the deadline of your submission and in the case of uh, yesterday's mass lecture the deadline was the day before which was on sunday i have received few messages from students who did not submit on time because when i created that activities on google classroom it came together with the deadline that means if you have uh, if we have exceeded, oh sorry, if you have exceeded the deadline, or you did not you did not manage to submit on time, therefore the submission is closed. So what happened was what happened. Um, some students texted me and uh, informing me uh, many many things like uh, you have uploaded it on YouTube. But of all the cases that came to me who did not manage to submit on time, most, not most, all of the cases were the issue of doing it at the very last minute. Okay, at the very last minute. Um, the deadline was yesterday. Yesterday juga lah baru nak upload on YouTube. Yesterday juga lah baru nak upload semua on YouTube with your poor internet connection at home with this and that so i have to tell you this i cannot accept submission other than the ones that you submit via google classroom yeah i have to tell you this because number one i have already extended the deadline so you are basically given three weeks to complete those activities now, if we were to look at these activities, each activities, 
each activity is about 5 minutes. Kalau you only dah 5 minutes saja, that means you're not doing it 10 minutes. You're do, you're doing the you're meeting the bare minimum 5 minutes. 5 minutes out of your one week or if let's say that particular week you have to have two activities, so 10 minutes out of your one week. I think that is more than enough. And if you say, Mr. E, I have problems with the internet connection, I understand you because I also face the same situation. I have problems with my internet connection at home. And that is why even sat on Saturday and Sunday, I still come to the office. Okay, I know you don't have an office or a place for you to, um, to crash in order for you to use the internet. But you have to be a bit resourceful. You really need to resolve the issue of the internet because trust me, ELC 590 is not the only cause that requires you to use internet. Yeah. So I just want to share my story uh, so that nanti you you semua faham lah that I actually face the same problem. When we had PKP last year and early this year, I had classes. So imagine that at home, my internet connection is very poor. Very poor, yeah? I cannot subscribe to uh, TM ke ataupun, you know, other landline punya uh, internet. Tak boleh. So I have to use uh, my hotspot from, you know, my phone lah. And I have purchased numbers from almost all telco companies. But the reception is very poor. So, but then again, I still I still had to conduct my class. I still have to have my class on. Because I have promised that to my students. I cannot be doing a synchronous uh, activity or a, synchron a synchronous uh, lecture all the time. So I have to have a virtual face-to-face -face, like what we are doing now. I cannot go to Starbucks. I like to go to Starbucks. I like to drink Starbucks. Not a good thing to say, especially during Ramadan, yeah? Uh, when you are, we are fasting. But then again, you know, I just want to share the story. But I couldn't go to Starbucks or any coffee shops because PKP, you cannot dine, you cannot dine in. So you just have beli dan balik. So how did I resolve my issue? I stay put in my car. I parked my car somewhere where I could receive good connection, internet connection or telco, I mean line connection so that I can have good internet connection. And I had my class using my phone instead of my laptop. Lah. So I use my phone. So there were few cases. If you ask my students last semester, they saw me in my car giving lecture. Yeah. So all I'm trying to say here is we all we all face the problem. So you cannot just simply give your problem to me, Mr. E. Nah, I have a problem with my internet connection. Please solve it for me. No, you know well that your house internet connection, the how at at your house at home, your internet connection is very poor. Then you have to do something about it. You really have to resolve it. You can come up with a plan. Because this is going to be for the next few weeks for this semester, like it or not. So I'm not trying. I'm not trying to be cynical here. I'm not trying to demotivate you. No, I'm not trying to be macam orang yang tak tak nak Tak kita semua perlukan pertolongan, but we have to help each uh, ourselves first. That means you have to help yourself first. So, kalau you dah cuba macam-macam, then tak boleh juga, then I should understand. But sometimes some students, they like to take the shortcut, the easiest way out. For them, let me just tell my lecturer, hopefully he can help to resolve. I cannot help to resolve your problem. You have to solve your own problem. So, when students came to see and me, uh, texted me personally, and submitting the URL address or the YouTube links directly to me, Say, giving excuses like I tried to upload yesterday, it took me 12 hours, la, 10 hours, la, I didn't know, I didn't expect. Well, I can number one, I cannot I cannot accept your submission because I have mentioned before the submit when was the submission, where to submit, semua dah siap. It will be unfair for others who manage to submit on time or even earlier. So, kalau you dah miss the first five activities, that's on you 
for every action there will be repercussion and inilah dia punya kesan dia but not to worry you still have another 22 activities to go please manage your time well number 2 um when you come and see me and you give me excuses like that like submitting this submit uh, by your yang me personally tu so i i have to reject because i find it unfair it's unfair for me to accept okay so i don't entertain i'm so sorry so i just want to clarify on that part right so the first five so to those who submitted on time or submitted earlier congratulations job well done and i will go through inshallah and i will because those are graded you have to understand that yeah they are graded so i will give you marks and you know what not lah if you don't know how to submit pun i have mentioned about this in our telegram channel okay in our telegram channel nanti saya share balik dalam telegram group okay that is one number two, i would like to talk about Uh, this week activities. So this week activities is activity number six and seven. They are very much relevant to, uh, sorry, similar to activity five and uh, four and five last week. The only thing that is that is changing is, sorry. The only thing that is changing is the uh, attention grabber. And I do understand, Mr. E, I think, oh, attention grabber untuk activity number six. I mean, when you look at the instruction. Sama dengan activity number four, yes. Tapi kan dia options dekat situ. Am I right? They give you options kat situ. For example, uh, activity number six, dia tulis kat situ, uh, presentation on attention getter, specific purpose and central idea tu. Any type of attention getter, anecdote, rhetorical questions and humor. So last week, activity number four, you choose anecdote. So this week you choose either rhetorical questions or humor. Tu je. Sebab tu yang saya kata tu je yang berubah. Last week pula activity number 5 dia kata any type of attention getter startling fact or statistics kan. And then also um, quotations and arousing curiosity. And you notice that kalau practice number 4 uh, activity number 7 tu sama juga. So last week you did startling fact. Then this week you can choose statistics ke, quotations ke, arousing curiosity ke. Get it? So that is why we want you to do at least four activities where you play around with the attention getter. So your attention getter are interchangeable. That means they are always changing. Okay, based on this four across these four uh, activities. So itu saja. Again, submit on time. I dah tak nak dengar lagi dah lepas ni. Mr. E, I cannot submit on time lah. I have this problem lah. Uh, ini lah. Because I I just don't understand when you are given enough time to do it, yet you choose at the very last minute, at we hour, for you to submit. And then when you encounter problems, internet connection lah, apa lah, then you just submit macam tu. Tak boleh. There's a reason why we have to ask you to submit via Google Classroom because it has to be done that way. So for those who did not submit or, did not, uh, or you did not manage to submit on time, let this be a lesson. And for the next 22 activities, don't take it for granted and don't do it at the very last minute. Yeah. So done. And the third one, I want to talk about your assessment. Assessment number one, I... I do understand that I told you guys that it will happen this week. However, considering that you still have activity 5, eh, sorry, 6 and 7, I have decided to bring forward your assessment to next week. So assessment number 1 will be carried out in week 5, not week 4, yeah? So this week you only focus in completing the first two activities, eh, sorry, the uh, activity number 6 and 7. Okay, that part is done. Now, I'm, telling, I'm going to explain to you what will happen next week and when and how you will be doing your assessment. Our class starts at 2 p.m. and it ends at 4 p.m. So next week at 2 p.m., we'll start off with a lecture, a very short lecture, 20 minutes, about the delivery of a speech. Once we are done with that lecture, I will end my mass lecture and you are given time from, from 
the time that I have ended my mass lecture until four o'clock to complete your assessment number one. So nanti, when you submit, sama macam activity, tapi kali ni dekat bahagian assessment pula. Dekat Google Classroom. And the time that I have set is as such. From 2pm until 4pm on Tuesday next week. And this is also applicable to other classes as well. Yeah, That means uh, other mass lecture. So if your mass lecture is from uh, 11 to 1pm or from 8 to 10 p.m. at 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. or from uh, 11 to 12 p.m. okay or uh, 10 to 12 11 to 1 so 11 to 1 p.m. so within that two hours lah that is your time for you to complete your first assessment so you tak boleh buat sebelum yang ni you tak boleh buat selepas you kena buat pada waktu mass lecture sahaja buat apa you masa buat tu is video record you video record and then you upload it on YouTube, video record lah your assessment, upload it on YouTube. And with that link, you submit dekat bagian assessment. And all in all too, within that two hours. But not exactly two hours lah because I'll take about maybe 10 to 15 minutes for the mass lecture. And then you can continue. So you cannot submit selepas pukul 4 for today's class lah, selepas pukul 4. I mean for this class. Uh, sebab your class is until at 4, kan? You know, submit. So, I'll stop here. And if you have any question, continue. If you have any question. Okay, I have a question from Shafika Yusof. Assalamualaikum, Mr. E. Okay, next time ask in English, yeah, Shafika, this is an English class. No matter how terrible your English is, have confidence that your English is good and you have learned English daripada standard one until now, dah masuk university, all of you are graduate students, UITM pula tu, where English is the medium of instruction. I have faith that your English is at least average and above. Trust me, I have faith that your English is at least average and above. So be proud of yourself. And even if you make mistakes in asking questions in English, it's part of the learning process. I'm not going to laugh at you. I'm just going to rectify the mistakes so that you can learn. But never be afraid of using English to ask questions, especially in my class. Because this is an English class. Macam mana nak improve if you ask in bahasa Melayu betul tak? Okay. So, Shafika ask question. Saya nak tanya sebab ada setengah orang buat lain. Ada setengah orang buat lain. Apa? Okay. Untuk introduction for informative speech ni, perlu buat introduction saja, which is first paragraph saja atau include body content. If you are referring to the assessment, assessment number one is only about the introduction sahaja. So, kalau you draft tu, the introduction punya draft tu sajalah the first the first paragraph tu is the introduction itulah yang you draft and itu yang you practice nanti di hari kejadian next week you record you upload on youtube and you submit ah uh, itu itu first assessment second assessment is informative speech the complete speech uh, sebab itu you need to go and check uh, ataupun watch my video last week i did explain about this Ya, saya dah terangkan. So, second assessment is the whole complete speech with your introduction, body content and conclusion. And kalau you cakap, so that means we use the same introduction yang kita buat untuk first assessment. Yes lah. Tapi ada setengah orang lepas dia dah buat first assessment, dia tengok, dia nak ubah sedikit, nak improvise because you want to come up with a better introduction for your second assessment. Because I can only assume the topic for your first assessment and your second assessment remains the same. 
So I hope I have answered your question. Christina ask question, how long is the proper duration? Okay, macam ni lah. I do understand. Some kata dalam tu tulis sampai 10 minit. Okay, make it like this. Five, four to five minutes saja. Four to five minutes for your introduction. Not more than five minutes. Not less than four minutes. Four to five minutes. Okay. Meaning that Mr. E, the assessment. Ah, kejap eh. I have to ni. The assessment cannot be done before 2 and after 4, right? Yes. If your class is at 2 p.m. until 4 p.m., you tak boleh buat before 2 and after 4. So, other students cakap saya, Mr. E, is it okay if I record first video tu? Ataupun dia kata, is it okay I record and I upload on YouTube first? Tak boleh. You kena buat di hari kejadian. So, other students cakap, macam mana Mr. E tahu? If you upload earlier, we can check on YouTube lah. We can check on YouTube. We check and then kita tengok bila you upload. If it is, if it, it, it was, sorry, if it is uploaded before yang 2 ataupun uh, before 2 p.m. Pusat you dah buat awal 1, uh, you will be awarded with 0. Okay. Kalau you cakap, Mr. E, if I record first video, Mr. E macam mana tahu? Hey, we can still detect. Sebenarnya, every video recording yang you buat, kita boleh detect dia punya uh, DNA record session dia bila, bila. So, dia akan beritahu time dia. Phone, I can still detect. So, the bottom line is, try not to. Okay? Try not to. Alright. How long is the proper duration? Oh, sorry. Dah jawab tu. Okay, Mr. E. Thank you. Alright. We have chosen a topic for activity 4, 5, 6, 7. The whole 10 minutes will be the same except for the attention getter. Is it? Yes, Fatin. Yes, betul. That's true. Okay, Christina, Mr. E, I did the introduction but mine only lasts for less than a minute. I don't know what else to say in my intro. Can Mr. E do an example? Oh, I tak boleh lah do example. Penat, bulan puasa ni nak buat. Okay, impromptu pula tu, I kena prepare. But, you can always Google. Okay, you can always Google and see people's introduction of a speech. Macam mana dia buat. How long will it take. Alright. And then, pacing kena jaga. That's why, that's why I said, if you put the words in front of you and you read it out, of course lah, it will be shorter. It ha you have to be natural like what I'm doing right now. Whatever that I am explaining to you within this an hour, one hour ni, from 2 until 3, insyaAllah, kalau saya letak kat depan and I read it out, it will be about 10 to 15 minutes saja. But how am I able to go through the whole thing for one hour? Because when I speak, pacing dia kena jaga, and I explain, I don't dictate ataupun read out. I don't read out. I explain my points. Okay, tangan pun bergerak macam gini. There will be pauses. We'll stop for a while. Those things will pick up until one or two minutes. Trust me. Mr. E, if students want to change the topic for activity six and seven after reading that, boleh allowed. Cuma tinggal lagi the topic that you'll be using for your first assessment and your second assessment. I think I've mentioned last week. It is advisable to remain with the same topic. But if you want to choose pun, I'm not going to be that rigid. You are allowed to. Sorry, if you are going to change pun, I'm not going to be that rigid. I still allow you to change. But make sure that whatever topic that you have decided, no one else in your group is doing it. I don't want until later I listen to your, your, your assessment. Number one, one is doing introduction about CAD. And then there's another student pun doing an introduction about CAD. Dah dua orang cakap pasal CAD. Uh, so, this part, you have to work together. Make sure that no one is doing on the same topic. Right? Okay, any more question before I proceed with today's lecture? Yeah? Kalau tak ada, I'll just go on. If you have question, tiba-tiba teringat, just ask your question. I'll stop dekat Hanis tadi. Eh? Hanis. Right? Okay, now let me share with you. Okay. All right. I'm going to talk about this. Uh, I think last week I have talked about the uh, introduction. Today I'm going to continue with body content and conclusion so that you, sekarang ni you faham 
the structure of writing uh, or drafting a speech. Okay, so we are done with the introduction. So what is basically needed? What are needed for your body content? So we have topic sentence, we have elaboration, we have supporting materials, concluding sentence and transition. Now, this is the sample. Okay, this is the sample of a body content. Everything is marked, yeah? Kalau yang yellow ni is topic sentence. I'm not going to explain to you what topic sentence is. You tahu tak, topic sentence ni you belajar masa peringkat sekolah rendah lagi. Sekolah menengah pun belajar. Masuk uh, diploma pun belajar. So, I'm not going to talk anymore pasal topic sentence tak boleh. Okay? Uh, sebab nanti sekarang kalau saya, saya you know, um, talk about it nanti di benda sama nak ulang balik penat saya kita semua berpuasa hari ni kan alright pergiing tekak saya nanti alright ok so this one you can just read on your own lah ok you boleh tahu all I'm trying to mention here is when it comes to supporting materials here so if you notice dekat sini first I use a book by Judy Parkinson to support my first body content and also at the same time I look at Aizuddin Zakarian's research and he talks about the same topic for my first body content and with this i support my 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 apa ni my my body content number 1 lah and aizuddin zakarian also provides this a pie chart and i describe this pie chart so that people understand better about my first body content okay why am i using a pie chart as well okay because uh, that one i'll talk about it later uh, if you are asking Mr. E, what are uh, other than pie chart ke ataupun research finding ke that we can actually use as supporting materials to our point in our body content. So you can look at books, articles, statistics, expert opinions, observation, banyak. Ini sikit je. We have newspapers, magazine, online magazine, educational magazines, uh, online newspapers, blogs, semua boleh. So you can use them to support your materials or to, sorry, to support your body content. Okay, alright. Now let us look at um, untuk your speech nanti, uh, informative speech. Now for your informative speech, it is compulsory for can you can add three body content. Please ignore here. Eh, this one saya tulis kasi tu one body content tak ada three. Eh, it's three typo. So three body contents. One of the body one out of these three body content. Let's say you choose the first body content. You must make sure that the first body content is supported with a graph or a chart. I repeat, a graph or a chart. Wajib. Wajib. Compulsory. That's why I put the word compulsory here. Okay? Compulsory. It is compulsory. Get it? All right? So, you, kalau you tak nak pakai the first paragraph, you nak pakai the second one. The second body content, terpulang. Asalkan mesti ada one, para, uh, one graph or one chart. To support. Now, the conditions of the chart and the, the graph, yeah, cannot be something that you make on your own. You have to find it from your materials, supporting materials, yang this one ni. Cari lah, to support. Okay? Maybe ada yang cakap, Mr. E, when I look, ada, they, they have statistic dalam bentuk nombor lah, in table forms. Tapi tak ada dalam graph, um, uh, chart ataupun graph. Is it okay if I convert that table ataupun those numbers into chart? Uh, that one is okay. Walaupun tak ada, tapi dia ada dia punya statistik dia, dia ada dia punya number dia, yes, you can change or convert into graph or chart. Tapi you create on your own, tak boleh. Tak boleh create on your own, ya? Okay, that is about body content. And of course, conclusion lah. Conclusion ni senang je. You boleh tengok je kat sample kat sini and what is needed. Yeah, I'm not going to explain in detail. As long as you have a conclusion, good enough for me. Alright? Okay. Any question? Any question to ask about body content? No, say. Uh, hold on, yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, Che Afizan.
Okay, so uh, one Alif ask questions. Hold on ya. Um, oh, kejap-kejap. Ada ramai dah tanya soalan. We stop at Hanis tadi kan? Okay, Sharifah dulu, Sharifah. Meaning that we have to show our graph in the video. Yes, of course. And nanti I will come to the next lecture ni. Kejap lagi ni, visual aid. Uh, then baru you faham sedikit. Okay. Salam sir, is the graph to be attached to the script? Script? No, 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 no. You're not going to give me any script at all. Tak ada script. As, as I mentioned to you, tak ada written. There is no written assessment here. All you do is you, your video saja bercakap pasal your speech. Tapi nanti you have to show. You have to show your, you have to show your graph. Macam mana nak show your graph tu? Ah, ni nanti kejap lagi saya nak masuk visual aid. Okay? Ah, saya nak masuk visual aid tu macam mana. Alright? Okay, no question ya. Yeah? Then I'll move on to the next one. Visual aid. Okay, so basically, <coughs> for your first, uh, sorry, for your second assessment, which is your informative speech, and your last assessment, which is your persuasive speech, it is compulsory for you to have a visual aid, a visual aid, at least one visual aid. Now, let us look at the definition of visual aids. Visual aids are materials used to assist your presentation at your workplace, like put kat situ workplace, because... Somehow that's relevant, yeah. Um, you can also uh, uh, some because you must you must know one thing. Your visual aid is to assist. Macam saya, I'm using this uh, slide, man. This slide is to assist my lecture, not me. Eh? I do not need this to to assist my me. I need this to assist my lecture. Syarahan saya. And visual aids also function to assist audience to understand my lecture. So the same thing happens here. Your visual aid is to assist your speech and to assist audience to understand your speech. So that is the function of a visual aid. Aid tu kan maksudnya pertolongan. Itu ni membantu. Okay? However, video aid, sorry, visual aids cannot be the center of your presentation. That is wrong. Maksudnya, when you present, you use slide, for example. Dah semua orang nak kena fokus kat slide. Patut dia fokus kat you and your speech. Bukan slide you. Get it? Okay. So, let us look at some of the example of visual aids. Yeah? So, pie chart, bar chart, graphs, organography, they are all considered as visual aid. Uh, tu tadi, because I said out of these three body content, it is compulsory again. One, you choose one body content, compulsory to find a chart or a graph to support. Automatically, you dah ada satu visual aid. How are you going to present your visual aid? Macam saya tunjuk tadi lah, macam saya tunjuk sekarang ni. I can either use slide or I can just simply show the graph. Okay? Itu pun, kalau you pakai contohnya, uh, if you are using this, uh, apa, uh, Webex ke, ataupun Google Meet ke, ataupun uh, uh, zoom ke to record your presentation. Uh, so, you share lah. You click share tu kan. And then you show lah macam tu. But some people, they prefer to organize the whole thing in a form of slides. So, next is slides also can be considered as visual aid. Slides, ya, yeah, boleh. As visual aids. Uh, PowerPoint ke Prezi ke Haiku Deck ke PDF ke semua ni lah macam sekarang. I'm using PDF lah. So, considered as visual aids. So, some people, when you have, let's say, images, like just now, graph and whatnot, and also in your PowerPoint, you want to put, you know, you want to put uh, words ataupun points ke, you organize dalam bentuk PowerPoint. So, you dah ada berapa visual aids kat situ? So, graph is one, slide is one. Dah dua dah visual aids. I just want one, at least, at least. And you have more than one? Sure, of course, the more the merrier. Other than that, Audio, video, eh? sometimes people show video, handouts, and even props. For example, today I want to talk about this. Bakulsia. Very small Bakulsia. Eh? Very famous. I have this in my room. Tewa Melaka. And I like to collect this kind of things because it's very senti because sentimental. This is very something or um, traditional, something yang kita, apa? 
we i value lah something yang yang ada unsur-unsur tradisional okay so i want to talk about bakosia ni what is this how it is used informative kan so i just use this this is a prop and automatically it becomes a visual aid kalau orang buat review kan macam ni asyik tak tak tanya kat belakang tunjuk ah macam ni asyik nampak macam tu ah tu visual aid lah tu tapi they consider prop lah and not only this katakanlah you are a yoga practitioner okay you are a yoga practitioner that means you practice yoga lah and you want to demonstrate three important moves in yoga that can help you to reduce weight contoh you buat confirm you reduce weight so you pun nak buat tu lah nak buat macam tu so macam nak tunjuk ke orang so you pun tunjuklah move tu macam ni lah macam ni lah macam ni okay this is how you do it this is the standing lah this is apa warrior standing lah this is uh, apa tak macam-macam lah move dia automatically you have become a prop and you are actually a visual aid because you are showing it okay but please do not get yourself confused if let's say you are presenting your speech and i ask you what's your visual aid i am the visual aid lah tapi you're not doing anything ah uh, tu bukan tu bukan visual aid okay all right any question about visual aid Nah, ada soalan tak pasal visual aid? No question, ya? So, no question. I assume everyone has understood my lecture today. So, this week, you just focus on completing activity number six and seven please respond it on time or earlier don't do things at the very last minute okay do we need visual aid tak ada lah yang visual aid assessment one introduction je normally visual aid is to assist the content not your introduction betul tak tapi ada juga pakai visual aid in the introduction for example you show video contohnya sometimes you use video to get the attention that means the video functions as attention getter in your introduction tapi we will consider that your video is also a visual aid pun boleh ah terpulanglah pada your creativity okay tapi visual aid compulsory dalam speech complete speech so assessment number 2 assessment number 4 wajib ada visual aid sebab dia dalam complete speech ya yeah. anything else Alright, uh, so please get your activities done. Oh, ada lagi from Oliver. For visual aids, we can edit our video, which is insert the video or images during the video. Um, are you talking about visual aids to be used in the speech? Ke? Not the video you are uploading for activities, yeah? I'm, I, I, I assume that the video that you use for your visual aids in your speech yeah not the video you record yourself though don't get yourself confused with that yeah oliver boleh tak reaktif uh, clarify the on this part i don't know which video are you referring to can we prepare the visual aid beforehand before the speech or oh, meaning You want to you want to find first the video, uh, sorry. You want to prepare the video dulu. That means, uh, pre, uh, sorry, not video. You want to prepare the visual aid dahulu, and then on uh, masa assessment number two baru you buat. Okay, boleh. Dia preparing the video for your assessment two. It has to be done within that two hours nanti. Tapi we are not going to talk about this yet. I'm not going to discuss in detail about assessment number two. My focus is next week assessment number one. Nanti saya akan terangkan balik pasal assessment number two. Okay, I will explain about assessment number two. Now let us focus on assessment number one. Cuma do you understand the concept of visual aid ke dulu tak? I don't talk about assessment number two yet. I don't want you to be confused. Because your your the one that is due next week is assessment number one. So we focus on that dahulu. Okay, but I want I just want to know if you have understood the concept of visual aid tu. 
Contohnya ada lain yang cakap Mr. A, I'm going to use a doll to explain to people about something. So, a doll to consider visual aid ke? Ha, visual aid lah. Hmm. It, it is considered as a prop. So, it is a visual aid. Okay. So, don't forget your activity number 6 and 7 to be submitted within this week. Try to do it on time. Okay, please, please manage your time wisely. And then, uh, get yourself prepared for next week assessment number 1. And on top of that, you still have activities to be done next week juga because activities are to be done every week. Okay. All right. So I guess that is all for today. Do not forget. Uh, apa lagi Rahman pula? Okay. Tengok no, Rahman. Do we need to send the video as raw video or should we edit before submit? Um, are you referring to the video of activities? Rahman? Assessment. Okay. A first assessment, introduction. Are you referring to the first assessment, Rahman? Yes, introduction. Um, introduction is just you doing your introduction. You record yourself using your phone. And whatever that is being recorded, that will be uploaded on the YouTube. Simple as that. You do not need to edit. We don't edit. I don't see any reason for you to edit. You nak letak apa lah, aku ke, tak payah. Just an introduction. Alright, just pop and then upload on YouTube. Alright. Nanti untuk assessment number two, the speech, itu lain. Itu I will explain. Let us talk about introduction. So introduction macam you buy activities juga. You record je and then you upload. Right. But of course, make it proper lah because it is an assessment. Janganlah pakai paju, pagoda ke apa ke, you know, with your messy hair lah, muka bawah bangun tidur lah, apa lah. Or you want to make it different, you want to record it outside with kereta lalu lalang, bising, tak dengar apa you cakap, okay. Uh, I know you want to be different but at the end of the day, it's not the showmanship we are assessing but it's more on the on the production of the speech. Do you? Uh, all right. Okay. Anything else? Okay. So don't forget your attendance on your future. Please check your attendance on your future. Okay. Please check your attendance on your future. Kalau you terlupa, nanti consider absent. Eh? You still have to meet up that 80% of your attendance. Um, please complete activity number 6 and 7. Oh, ada lagi soalan sekejap dari Hani. Does the mark include our attire solely on our speech? Or, oh, we have marks. But for full speech, we have marks for your attires, of course. For first assessment ni, uh, I am yet to look at the rubric. Yeah, because it's a new assessment. Assessment number 1 and number 3 are new assessment. Number 2 and number 4, they are the one that we did last semester. So, number two, number four, yes, they have marks for attire. Cannot enter your future, Mr. E. Takpelah tunggu sampai you boleh enter. I also don't know what to say. I This is out of my control, eh, Shafiq. This is out of my control. I can only remind you, if you cannot uh, access your future, I also don't know how to respond to that because I'm not the one in charge for your future. So, yeah, once you dah boleh dapat, nanti you masuk lah, eh, Shafiq, right? Okay, what else? Ah, so don't forget your attendance. Mm, upload your activity number six and seven and prepare yourself for next week assessment number one, yeah? All right, so I know it's a bit too early for me to say this, but uh, selamat beriftar lah because uh, we're not going to meet until the end of the day. So selamat beriftar and inshallah I'll see you guys next week. Ah, sorry, Oliver have a question. Our first assessment and our introduction to speech activities is the same. Our first assessment and our introduction to speech activities are the same. Yeah, they are the same. They are the same. Cuma process dia is like this, Oliver. First, you do, do uh, the activi uh, those activities. And then from there, 
you once you have looked at four because there are four activities that actually cover the introduction once you have done these four activities then you reflect yourself what else can i improve so that i'll do better when i when i do when i sit for the first assessment because that's first assessment too you tak boleh buat awal-awal you have to do it next week right next week during our mass lecture so during the mass lecture too based on the activities that you have done before then you want to ada yang cakap dengan saya mr e i use the same topic from activity number four, five, six, seven, and also for assessment number one and assessment number two the same topic tak apa boleh je okay should be okay all right okay good all right so those who are going to uh you're breaking your fast until later i, I wish you selamat beriftar lah all right selamat berbuka so i'll see you around uh you guys around next week inshallah on tuesday okay so that would be all thank you so much assalamualaikum thank you sir thank you sir thank you sir, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.